and welcome to another episode of Intune.Training, the place to learn how to use Microsoft Intune, the Steve and Adam Show, with Steve and Adam this week. Uh, hey, Steve! <laughs> hey, Adam! Man, it's been just ridiculously whirlwind of the uh, last couple of weeks, hasn't it? It's, wow. It's just, wow. That's all I could say. The last couple of weeks is just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so for those of you at home, uh, the today is March the 20th. This is the end of the 21st. First... Oh, it's, oh, sorry. The 21st for Steve, 20th for myself. We, He's calling in from the future. How is it over there in the future, Steve? It's all still locked down. Yeah. So this is uh, this week we've had a fair amount of lockdown happening in uh, in our state uh, or, or whatever our city and uh, kids are home from school and lots of work from home going on and stuff and um, had the MVP summit this week so that's been a, a different perspective on some things and uh, just really had a great opportunity to engage with a lot of the community and we're we, the the kind of general consensus happening right now is talking about how do we work from home and how do we configure VPN and what about split tunneling and what about this and that and so um, one of the topics strangely enough that we have not actually covered in Intune.Training is how to configure a VPN profile and push that out and so today that's what we would like to do I believe yep. so um, we it's worth noting we don't have you know clients or VPN or anything to be able to actually test with or show you, but like that would matter because the demos probably wouldn't work anyway. Um, <laughs> but we're going to show you and hopefully inform you if you didn't know that you can in fact uh, go in and configure VPNs and talk about some of the gotchas and caveats uh, through that process. So, um, uh, but yeah, so so yeah, this 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 has been a an interesting time. So we're trying to trudge yeah. through and hopefully add some value to you as you um, are dealing with. Uh, the things you're doing in your environment and um, hopefully if you've been following along you've been able to stand up an Intune tenant and and have already built some of this stuff out and um, hopefully it's just a quick button to be able to go and and uh, make this happen for yourself exactly um, so yeah the big one today we're going to talk about as Adam said is the VPN profiles there's a couple of little quirks um, that work real that allow you to use native tool sets but there's caveats um, so, Adam, if we can go to the device configuration section for Intune, which I'm assuming will be under devices in DMAC. That's correct. And by the way, we're at devicemanagement.microsoft.com or aka.ms slash DMAC. Um, uh, this is the um, admin center. Um, it's not quite the same layout as the Intune portal, and I've been trying to force Steve to um, use this, so we are using it because it's sure on drive and it's not. Um, so <laughs> somehow we've got to learn this new stuff. Um, exactly. They're different in some ways. Uh, some features are in some and not in others, and things yep. are laid out differently. Um, so get familiar with them so you can find the things you need to find. Exactly. So we're under devices, and we're going to go to configuration profiles, I yep. believe. That's correct. Uh, and now we're going to hit create. So it's going to be a su super simple process here. We're going to put our naming convention of win10 underscore. Not wonton. Wonton. I'm really hungry. Can somebody deliver some Chinese food for me, please? I'd love some food right now. No, right? Steve has been awake since about 2 a.m. his time. 2.30. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Thanks for hanging with us, Steve. It's all good. Um, all right. Yeah. So seen us do these steps before, but so this, in this case, we're going to go grab a profile type. All the way type down to VPN. VPN. Cool. <clears throat> so... From here, we select the base VPN setups, and that contains all of our configuration. So the connection name you see there is what the end user will see uh, in settings and in the tray when you're connecting. Um, so make it descriptive for the user, not descriptive for the admin. So <laughs> I, I've seen a couple of uh, customers where they've gone, oh yeah, it's the Microsoft VPN. It's like what does the customer need to know? It's the Microsoft VPN. It's the new VPN or the VPN. But anyway, <coughs> I digress. Yes. Um, what you'll see here is you have the ability to add multiple servers. Uh, this doesn't auto fail over. 
it will just appear in the um, settings page where you can select different uh, server IDs. Um, so what we'll do here is we'll just do a description of VPN um, or CorpNet or Corp VPN, and we're just going to do VPN.intune.training. We it doesn't resolve anywhere. We're just going to use that as a a, a representation. Sorry, um, you can't use our VPN to connect in. Sorry. Well, you can. It's just not going to go anywhere. <laughs> it won't go anywhere. <laughs> Um, and make sure you have a default server set, whether it's this one or whatever server you're adding there. Um, very important to have that default server because so will auto set up. You can import a CSV. Like there is an import option, so that's pretty cool. Yep. Um, does it does it give you a format for CSV. the CSV file? No. No. Okay. Well, fair enough. No. So we'll just we'll just guess at it. I assume okay. it's going to be description. FQDN and default server true false. Sounds about right. Um, oh, you know what? You could enter one and then you could export it into CSV and then you could open the CSV and see magic. What it looks like man, look at us solving the world's problems one click at a time. Yep. Uh, all, right, all right. So while that's loading up, there you go. So yeah, exactly. Some basic headers, no headers, up to you. Yep. Awesome. All right. Moving on. All right. So then the next one is register the IP of the for the internal DNS. That is dependent upon your requirements in the organization. So you may need to be able to route to that computer, um, but nine times out of ten you don't need to do that. Um, the most important one on this screen is the connection type. So you'll see here we've got um, a, a whole heap of vendors being Pulse Secure, F5, Sonic Wall, Checkpoint, Citrix, Palo. Um, and then we have four or three protocols and automatic down the bottom. Um, so where if you select, say, the Palo Alto one as an example. Sure, um, grouping yep. bring these guys together. So that's the extras down here at the bottom. Yep. So point those out. All right, so we're going to select uh, Palo Global Protect. But what we need to do is we're going to go a little bit out of this portal for a moment, uh, Adam. So if we just create a new tab, and we're going to go businessstore.microsoft.com. Uh, and we'll sign in there because it doesn't auto sign in. And then we're going to search for Global Protect. It prompted you for a password. It might have. I don't know. I, I was... So that you didn't have to edit it, I moved it. Just I in appreciate case. it. Um, so we're at the search up the top right hand side, Adam. And we're going to type in Global Protect. I've actually been using that um, that on my machine yep. for some of my clients. Works all right. It does. So what we're seeing here is the Global Protect client from the actual store for business, which is great. Um, but there are licensing considerations and constraints required to use this agent over the MSI one that is provided by Palo Alto. This is using um, the uh, mobile license on the actual Palo Alto and that's the same with all of the applications that you see in that list. So you need to make sure that your VPN appliance is licensed for uh, your mobile phones to be able to connect in, otherwise it won't work. Um, which is, it's a gotcha, it's a, it's a big gotcha. Uh, and it's not obvious at all, and it's not even obvious here that you need that client to do things. That's right. Um, so if, if even if you hover on the I there, Adam, on next to the connection type, um, it doesn't even say that you need to install that agent. So you need to deploy that out to that computer, otherwise you can't do anything, um, which is really frustrating. Good to know. Um, and, and so in this instance, it would be just like adding any other um, app into yep. our business store and then going in and adding that to, as a deployment and things like that. That's correct. Um, Excellent. So we then, um, so I'll get you to change it to automatic, Adam, just because I don't want to deal with all the Palo stuff. Uh, no, oh, okay, down. okay, I see. Yeah. Uh, actually, just a really quick one. If we drop the drop down again, um, the protocols down the bottom: IKE2, L2TP, and P2PTP. Um, 
we highly recommend that you use the Ike V2 standard uh, because it works a lot. Works across most VPN providers and it's in core product. So it's an international standard, so therefore you don't need to deploy any agents out to the client computers. So it's just Good. one less agent that's needed on your computers. Excellent. So you do want me to select that one? Yep. All right. It also changes how it auths. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, and we're going to select always on because we want it to auto always be there. So just in case the user needs to do anything, uh, we want it to remember credentials and then we can select our auth and we have the ability to select whether it's EAP or certificates. If you select EAP, you'll have to go and export the EAP configuration um, from a VPN computer um, or a computer that has the VPN configuration already there um, as well as a certificate associated to that. Um, so we don't have certs in this environment and we don't have um, we don't have yep. an EAP uh, thumbprint. So the EAP thumbprint uh, isn't the most intuitive but to get that it's a matter of running uh, the git vpn connection um, object from uh, PowerShell and then getting the inner XML profile configuration. Um, there's some really good blogs about it and there's a doc, docs article on it that will get linked in below. Um, cool. So that's basic. That 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 is our base configuration. We're going to do, just leave it as machine um, auth. So the next step is we can sit there and say under apps and traffic rules, and we can say only explicit apps are going to be able to use the VPN, um, which is cool. So you can do on-demand VPN. So oh, I really like that. So yeah. so I don't have to connect to VPN, and then be and have my entire all of my. So, so let's say I let's say I wanted to run VPN on my personal machine to get into a, uh, a client site or do yep. RDP into a server. This allows me to not have to VPN my entire traffic through that company. I can now just it, it will just turn on when I need it for that particular. So it's or I can turn it on as I need it for that. Yeah, app. it will get created for that app. So That's when you cool. open the app, it should go and pop it up. Should. Um, is how it's designed. Uh, you can then step across into um, the conditional access component and we can explicitly state you have to have a conditional access health level of XYZ to be able to access the environment. Um, we don't have the issue of hash so we're just going to leave that at the moment as disabled. Um, the next one is DNS. Yep, we're on discard. And this is where you can put in your search suffix list. So if you've got an organization that has an external domain name um, or a public re publicly registered domain name as their internal domain, put it in here. Because then it will force it to go internal rather than external to do any internal routing. Um, especially if you're doing split tunneling um, and along with making sure your routes are set up. So. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. You can put in name resolution uh, tables to say this is where you're going to go for this domain and all that fun stuff. Um, the last, uh, the next one is the proxy. Obviously, this is where you can say, "Well, I've got an auto proxy," and it's like, "I need it turned on for my VPN," and away I go. Um, so it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it allows you to sit there and route all that internet traffic. Um, split tunneling is a contentious one um, for a lot of organizations. Um, for me, I sit there and go, of course you want split tunneling. I've seen the ramifications of not having split tunneling where we had a client complain for two to three weeks. There, when they were connecting to uh, external private Wi-Fi, so nothing to do with work, it was coming up and saying it wasn't connected to the internet. And what it was traced down to was their VPN wasn't set split tunneling, so all the internet traffic was going through the VPN, which was then going through the proxy server that was then not returning fast enough the uh, active probing to say that they were on the internet. <laughs> wow. 
So. Yeah, I mean, so so if you if you if you're on our channel, you can check. Uh, we posted a video. Um, it's called Off the Cuff, and we were talking about. Uh, I was talking to Brian Dam um, at length about the from the config manager side on turning on co-management, and 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 we were talking about split tunneling as part of that, and. Um, yeah, this is this is quite the discussion that's happening right now, where organizations um, that have previously not allowed split tunneling are realizing that it's melting their pipes, and they need to do something to help offload yep. some of the traffic. And so, one of the concerns there was, okay, so if you do split tunneling, uh, or if you if you're looking at doing your uh, Windows updates, um, and like especially for a, you know an on-prem managed device, um, you oh, don't I want can your see Windows what's updates all coming from Config Manager routing through your VPN because you're going to pull um, all of your, you know, when Patch Tuesday hits, you're going to find out who's got split tunneling and who doesn't, right? Yep. Um, so, um, and, because and we don't know how have... long we're going to be living in this state, right? Yep. Like, we don't know how long we're going to all be quarantined and things. And so to just say, oh, well, we just won't patch until we get back in the office, man, that's probably not the best uh, that's security scary. stance to take. So so take an opportunity to evaluate the merits of split tunneling for your environment. Obviously, there are there, this exists for a reason, um, but yep. you should be able to partner with your security and uh, networking teams to come up with a solution that helps offload some of the, the traffic um, so that you're not pulling everything back through your... Um, your, your VPN tunnel. And, and look, if you need to be looking at and inspecting the traffic that their ca uh, that your staff are going to on the internet, there's better lightweight solutions. Cisco has a solution, Microsoft has a solution, um, and there's a couple of other products out in the market that I know of that will give you that deep level understanding of all that technology. And, and another thing that we've that's come up on several of our discussions recently has been this idea that um, if your concern is that you don't want your your users using their company device on the internet without all that traffic coming back and being able to filter it and monitor it and, and lock it down um, because of security, well, that should be just one of your pieces of you know one of the layers of security that you're using yep. to protect your devices. It should not be the only one. And so if if the if your users can't use their device with the VPN turned off and still be secure enough for your company, you should really reconsider what other controls you could put in place um, for your devices to, to build up that security on that client. And look, the, the most important thing to remember is we're sitting there and saying, we're going to extend our data center down to that client computer via this VPN. You've just punctured a hole in your data center to that client computer that you have no control over for your VPN to come in. So the goal should be that you don't need a VPN, try and push it through secure gateways, through um, Azure, app, uh, Azure Active Directory app proxy and things like that. But the reality is today there is a requirement for VPNs, but the goal in the long term is get off it. It's going to cause yeah. you problems. It's a yeah, security hole. It's, so it's you know it's just one of those. Uh, it's yeah. This is it's a consideration. It's a discussion to have. Um, yes. It's one of those things that if you weren't aware, this definitely can help you with your bandwidth um, things. Definitely. But yeah, and and, and really kind of to, to our point of. The, the direction that we're trying to drive um, all the viewers of this channel um, is that we really want to see people have less reliance on the need for VPN or the need sure. for on-prem resources. Um, or even if you do have on-premises resources, being able to get your users to those in other ways. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's definitely where we'd like everyone to be. It's a journey. It's, that's right. you know, it, 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 it's not gonna happen overnight. Um, but hopefully some of this stuff that we're talking about helps you get here for your immediate needs. Yep. Um, so one thing to put in here as well, Adam, is the destination prefix um, and prefix size. So this is actually pretty important in the sense that if you have organizations that have used the public, or well, use the standard domestic IP range of 192.168, 
you need to put that in here and explicitly say route through the split tunneled VPN because otherwise you will have issues where you will not be able to get to internal resources because it's sitting there and going oh no that's local network <laughs> yeah uh, yeah you know what's funny is I, I, I have a client um, currently who so uses 192.168 and uh, yeah, but and my all the whole servers are on. Uses one nine two one six eight as well. <laughs> yep, and all like I've got a customer the same, and, and all of their server resources are on one nine two one six eight zero range. Oh, yeah. And you just sit there and go, well, I can't route to that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, um, so. IP, IP addressing is very important in corporate world, but that's a whole different conversation. <laughs> We're already um, way out of my depth. Uh, the one time, the, the time, the point when you got to the third octet, I was at, you lost me, man. I'm done. Yeah, man. <laughs> I, I, I get it. Um, and then the last one is that trusted network detection. And that's actually pretty important as well. This is where we are sitting there and saying, if you're on CorpNet, do not connect the VPN. Yes, yes, that is correct. Um, yeah, so so we use the Apollo um, VPN, and it is always connected, but it's not connected because it will just yes. say, "Oh, you're you're on court, you're internal," and it will just turn itself off. That's right. Um, so yes, this is a great one. Yep. Um, so yeah, that that covers that really covers off the whole setting up that VPN agent and how you'd configure that for your devices. Um, ideally aim for that open sourced in, uh, international recognized standards for the protocols whether it's like v2 layer 2 point to point um, or um, layer 2 no sorry layer 2 tunnel protocol or point to point protocol um, these are the three protocols that all of the vendors typically will support but then they have their own SSL VPN over the top of it, which may have additional authentication required. Um, it all comes down to what works best in your environment. But for ease of management, we recommend using those um, the IKE V2 or the international standards and things like that. And so, uh, just to poke at it for a moment here, so so if we were to select one of these third-party ones, so let's just take a peek at the Apollo one. So mm -hmm. it offers an alternative to certificates. You could use a username and password, and then you could force them to put. And then there's a configuration uh, XML that you can put in here. So yep. Um, so you all, you know, you, depending on where you're at, you can decide which one of these things makes the most sense. Um, so if you have a, I would assume if you have a vendor that's not listed, then you would then really need to rely on one of these other ones as an alternative, yes. right? Or, and or, and, and this is very important, it is still valid to go and deploy out a Win32 app that has your installation media for that. Um, there is nothing stopping you from doing that. This is just out of the box support. And I, I need to stress that. This is just the out of the box support ones you can still do the manual or the, the Win32 installer depending on your vendor of how they can silently deploy it for you. And so, okay, so, so to that point, that's that's then relying, we're, we're talking about using the VPN that um, goes with the, 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 the built-in VPN yep. um, from, from Windows, right? That's correct. <laughs> And I'm realizing I can't show what I nope. have in my VPN, so I won't do that. But if you just type in VPN like I just did there, you'd be able to bring up your VPN screen and see um, your VPN connections. And so, so if you were to add a connection there, you could then select the. Um, let's see if I can do it like that. Hey, that works. Okay. Yep. So I clicked Add VPN Connection, and then this is where you can um, pull in. And so, like, I've got the Global Protect client in, installed on this machine at this point, and so it knows that it's there. Otherwise, you would be using the Windows V built-in built one. Yep. But so, and so what we're you, saying is that this profile that we create only works on, when you're using this interface to manage your right. VPN. So It'll you're having to either it. use a Windows Store app or use the, the built-in yep. in order for these configurations to apply. Yep. So just quickly, Adam, while you've got that up, uh, you want to click on the drop-down for VPN uh, type and you'll see that there's actually more options there. There's also SSTP, 
which is an older protocol that isn't recommended to be utilized um, but it works uh, cool. all the all the rest are newer protocols that are secure um, and, so and and so if we weren't pushing this down we could we could similarly just put you know, put our information directly yep. into this to connect to it. And so this would be a great thing. Go and manually set this up on one machine and make sure it all works and then go build out your profile. That way you're not yep. troubleshooting and putting policy refresh and stuff in, in the middle there. Um, exactly. So that works. Um, but so then to flip over to, you said we could do the Win32 app, we yep. wouldn't then deploy a profile. That would all no. be based inside of either group policy or in the client policy that you're pushing down. That's correct. Um, to that machine. Yep. Awesome. Perfect. Good to um, know. Well, I think that really covers off that whole VPN story. Um, yeah. And then the rest from here is just, you know, go and push it it's to the machines standard. you want to push to. Um, now, okay, so here's a great, a great, you know, tie together here. So um, we, uh, of course, I'm lost. I'm under the configuration profile. So if I go, I got to expand this back out. Okay, so if we go into the apps, we would be able to go and get our Global Protect app, if that's yep. the one that we wanted to use, um, and pull that in, which it w that actually should already come in because we're synced. Uh, we, if we if we synced, it, would sh it yep. should show up here automatically. It should be there, so see if you can search for it. We haven't, I haven't synced the store for it a bit, so. Well, yeah, it should have nearly done that in time. Um, but no. uh, ultimately, we should be able to then take the app and, and the policy and then put it together as a policy set yes and deploy it together right uh, like apps and no policies. no uh actually maybe i can't remember if this includes um win 32 i have store for business apps oh well yeah oh no, no, no that's a into that's the ios nope. one no nope. oh good point so it doesn't work with when with uh, store okay so if you were to use a Win32 and push nope. down something else with it. Win32 no. doesn't appear here either. Oh, yeah, that's right, because we would see our maths app there, too. Yep. Oh, boo. Well, maybe that'll come soon. This is still yes. preview, so. Yes. Um, but, wow, well, I was so excited. That seemed like the next route. That's yeah, where we go. I agree. Set up two deployments, push it to the same group. Um, good to go. And they actually call it out there, too, if you go back to policy sets. Yeah. Uh, and what did we? Uh, if you click on policy sets again, up in the top, create a policy set to associate existing objects such as objects, policies, and VPNs in a single package. Um, so this is typically for yeah, um, Mac, iOS, and Android at the moment. Um, and there's some stuff coming for Windows from what we can see. Or we'll can yeah. assume, I we don't know anything. We're just no, making we an don't. assumption. We are guessing. We don't know any new information about any of this. So, uh, don't take our word for any of this. Um, but yeah. So anyway, I think this would be a great a great inclusion there for that to be able to, to work that way. Um, so yeah, I think that's. I think we're good. I think that's how we do VPN in these Perfect. trying times, or awesome. in less trying times. Yeah. But, Hopefully you find this helpful. Give us feedback. Um, as yep. always, we are uh, available on social media. Uh, appreciate all the comments and all the support. Uh, find us on social media. I'm at Adam Gross TX, and I'm at On Prem Cloud Guy. Yep. And we will see you uh, hopefully next week. We will be, you know, we're going to keep trying to roll out a video a week if we can, but we'll just kind of see how this all plays out. But yep. um, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time. See you, Thank Steve. You. Sarah Adam. <laughs>